30 odd of homes here now. Yeah. Just as. Hi, my name is Glenis Watts and I'm a Gunnarokunai woman from Gippsland. I'm here at Lake Tyres. My name is Rita Watkins Hudson and I'm Percy Pepper's granddaughter and Granny Lucy's granddaughter. My name is Ozzy Cruz. I'm married to Beryl Cruz, we've been married for 60 years. And in my ancestry line, I'm a Gunai. My name's Ben Cruz. I'm a Monero Ewan man. My, my father was Monero and my mother was um, Ewan. Our title, my father's title was the Plover and my mother's title was the Black Duck. Um, in, in Aboriginal lifestyle, we didn't have cousins like um, you do in the system today. We, we had relationship through a totem system and totems were, were given so that that identified where you fit in within the tribe and where you fit in with, within other tribes. You could travel to another country and you tell them you're a totem and they, they will find someone in, that, in their tribe with the same totem and they might say to you, this is your mother or your brother or your sister. And so that's how totems work. And because we had that relationship that connected us with other tribes, that's why I have a strong kinship relationship today. It goes right back into tribal times under the totem system. Yeah, shop got burnt down. See, that's mm. another one at the cemetery. Even now I can go to up in the top end and I can talk to people there and I can call them brother and sister. And it's, and it's just natural. Or I can talk to old people and call them uncle or I can go somewhere else and they'll give me a bed and they'll feed me. So that's, that's why the um, kinship relationship is such a strong thing within Aboriginal communities. Well, Granny Lucy came down here. She wanted to be with family as well. And her um, parents, her father was here. Her mother had been buried here. Her mother and father were actually married at the church here. And she grew up here. She was born here. And yet she wasn't allowed to stay here when she was really sick and be with family. She actually had to, they said no, the government said no, when letters were being written by everyone asking if she could stay here until the day she died. She was very, very ill. She actually, they took her down to the river's edge, just up the road here, and they actually made a canoe, put her in the canoe and made her go back to Kurirup. And that was where she actually died and wasn't allowed to be buried back on country. Edward Mullet, Lake Tyres Mission Station, 29th of November, 1923. The Honourable Dr Argyle, Chief Secretary. Dear Sir, we the undersigned relatives of Lake Tyres feel very much at the loss of her departed daughter, the deceased Mrs Percy Pepper, who was fallen asleep in Jesus Christ, whose wish was that if anything should happen to her, that her desire was that her remains should be alongside of her dear father, Mr William Thorpe, who has been a Christian, and we thank God for the even time of his life, he has found Jesus. And now that he has died in the faith of Jesus Christ, the deceased Mrs. Percy Pepper, who has been a sufferer of a long illness, and while she was on, upon a bed of illness, Mr. Ferguson got word through a phone of Mr. Parker that all her children had to leave the Lake Ties Mission Station. And a mother, as love for her dear children, who was her only help in such a time of suffering. While she felt that her dear children could not remain, she could not bear them to go away from her. And she, the deceased Mrs Percy Pepper, was not able to walk down to the boat, uh, but she was very weak and that she had to be carried down on a stretcher by the aid of four men. She wanted to be buried with her parents. 
sort of part of our culture to come back to country and be buried on country and to go back to where you come from and where you were born or where your ancestors are. So it's all part of our history, part of being who we are. So it's really upsetting that she wasn't allowed to come back here and be buried alongside of her parents. From the Chief Secretary's Department, 12th of December, 1923. Read letter Mrs Bond. Mrs Pepper was almost white, as is also her husband and children. None of the family is eligible for assistance under the Aborigines Act, 1915. Pepper is a returned soldier on a block at Cooey Rupp. Owing to the serious illness of Mrs Pepper's father, William Thorpe, also very light coloured, Mrs Pepper and family went to Lake Tyres, and when her father died, Mrs Pepper was reported ill. Seventeen relatives came to the station during the illness of William Thorpe, none of which was eligible for assistance under the Act. In consequence, instructions were given the manager that Mrs Pepper might remain, but that Percy Pepper and the seven children must return to Cooey Rupp. Apparently Mrs Pepper accompanied them back as from the letter within, it appears she died and was buried in Pakenham Cemetery, which is reasonably close to her husband's home. There is only the statement of Edward Mullet that she desired to be buried at Tyres. In all probability, if the body were exhumed and buried at Tyres, it would result in the Pepper family desiring to transfer to that station to be near the mother's grave. Now, the case of Ernest Moburn, quoted by Mrs Bond, was by no means similar. Moburn was a full-blooded Aborigine. In those days, the Aboriginal people had to write and ask permission to do anything. The laws that we're talking about here is the Aborigines Protection Act, 1915, and these laws actually controlled all Aboriginal people. It, they were, it was virtually known as the Half Caste Act. So if they weren't dark enough or anything like that, they were segregated from their parents or their families. And it happened to all Aboriginal peoples across Victoria and they weren't allowed to come back on. They had to get permission to move around the Victoria. They had to ha get permission to do a lot of things, whether it was to visit and have their babies on country, whether it was to um, marry. They had to get permission to... Oh, they were controlled by the government, whether they wanted to build a house, how they built their house, where they built their house. Um, Aboriginal people were not, didn't have the same rights as non-Aboriginal people, so it was really racism which was in its full force. <laughs> what it means to be Gunai to me, that I am on country and I've got a lot of family here and friends and everybody knows that I am Gunai. I do remember going to these places like the sea and out the waters and the rivers and when we used to camp out, it, it was really nice. And I, I do remember too, my grand uncle, he used to make a tin, an old kerosene, kerosene tins opened up and he used to make a little humpy for the night or if it's a tree growing over like a branch and they'd throw a tent over it or a blanket and they'd make us comfortable under it for the day or for night if it was a nice night. But they'd still have to watch out for snakes. But we, we were really happy and contented and I still loved the bush and the waters and it's beautiful to, to be in country, on country. But I know when we was kids we used to go chasing the, you know, go down, my, my father would take us out different Sundays and mum and we used to go out barefooted we'd have a log of wood and he'd smoke the rabbits out, make a little fire with ferns at the end of a burrow and the rabbits would come out and us kids would be running barefooted after the rabbit trying to hit it with a, with a log of wood and porcupines, I used to pick those, get those and a lot of fishing. We, my family they lived for fishing and it was very good because you know we were able to fish with them and they learned us all the ropes on fishing and everything, so I still love fishing. 